you so much for showing up uh, to the first session this morning. I really appreciate it. And um, yes, uh, thank you for this really kind introduction. My name is Regina, and um, if you have any questions or um, remarks or anything, I'm more than happy to talk to you after the session. I'm not sure if we'll be able to fit in any time. If we do, we will better. But yeah, just come and talk to me. Um, right, uh, so I got um, my PhD, I think six months ago or so, uh, in um, grassroots uh, design, grassroots innovation. And I'm going to be talking about something completely different today. So we ran a small project with the um, FCBO, or the Frontier Technologies Hub in the UK, um, to try to figure out what, whether distributed manufacturing was something that was already at a scalable stage, or if you know preliminary work needed to be done uh, to support the work of distributed manufacturers. So my question is, because we're we're in the hardware track, right? Um, do you know about uh, distributed manufacturing? Who does? Two hands. That's one, two. Okay, maybe maybe you know about it from me. No, okay, from somewhere else. <laughs> Okay, my next question would have been is how many of you are involved in distributed manufacturing? One of the oh, all right, okay. Can I ask you what it is that you're involved in? Me? Yeah. There's a, a group of people that are out of the like, gathering for open science hardware that is starting a program called the Open Science Shop. Mm -hmm. um, so they're trying to form a collective that will eventually do distributed manufacturing of science hardware, but they're in their very early, early stages. So. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, so for our listeners online, uh, there's going to be a project, well now it's in the early stages still, but it's going to be within the frameworks of the gathering for open science hardware. Very cool. Looking forward to this. All right, so, okay, well, uh, this is good because I came to, with, with two definitions for you. Um, of course, when you're starting a new project on something, it's good to define what we're actually talking about. Um, and I feel like scalability is a term that is used um, quite often and quite generally, but it's actually quite interesting because when looking into the literature, um, we found that um, the term actually has no generally accepted definition. So what you're kind of, kind of trying to under, like see here is that scaling is not necessarily about growth only, but it is um, it means the growth potential. Uh, of a project or a company that, and the, their ability to exploit um, economies of scale. Yeah? And it is indeed the promise of uh, exponentially returning, increasing returns to scale. So this definition is actually designed for conventional businesses, whereas with distributed manufacturing, we're kind of looking at a, at a, at a slightly different um, approach. Um, and therefore, um, what we are working with is a definition that, is, that has been created for the humanitarian sector, which I thought was quite interesting. Um, so ELWA uh, is, uh, is an organization in the United Kingdom. They have an excellent um, report on, uh, on scaling humanitarian innovation. Uh, and so their definition is building on demonstrated successes to ensure that solutions reach their maximum potential, have the greatest possible impact, and lead to widespread change. This is kind of more human-friendly approach to scaling, I think. Um, right, and uh, with that, I would like to come to distributed manufacturing. So distributed manufacturing is an approach uh, to production that involves making goods in smaller quantities, in more locations, and closer to the point of use. Um, and what I also need to say here is that while we're talking about these two terms, uh, that most of the literature agrees that scaling distributed ma manufacturing, this type of approach, closer to the user, um, is actually a challenge, which should not come as a surprise because distributed manufacturing is actually understood as a small practice. Right. Um, still, we think that it makes sense to, um, to try to support those endeavors and also to try to see how they can be, they can be scaled because um, what we have seen, especially over the last uh, couple of years, but it's been going on for a while, is these like larger trends um, where traditional centralized manufacturing has kind of been um, failing people uh, on all sorts of different levels. Um, 
Centralized manufacturing is often built on long and unresponsive supply chains, so they can't really respond to, let's say, sudden urges um, and needs. Uh, it is also far from the consumer, so they get uh, consumers get what is being produced, and that's it. Um, and they often use resources that are already sparse uh, in inefficient ways. These are, of course, major problems, right? At the same time, distributed manufacturing has advantages um, that we have seen, for example, during um, the COVID pandemic, when makers were stepping up, producing uh, protective equipment, right? Um, what we've also seen is, for example, in humanitarian aid, man-made um, and natural disasters, supply chains often break down. There is no way to, to bring things to a particular place where people need it most urgently. Um, and so there, also, distributed manufacturing can help. Um, and what we're also seeing is that there's actually a lot of large corporations engaging in distributed manufacturing. They just don't really talk about it because, of course, they want to keep the information to themselves, which makes perfect sense. Um, but what we are seeing is that uh, they are looking at um, the future of supply chains, trying to figure out how it might work um, in the future, and uh, also producing parts um, for machines um, on demand, for example, in, um, uh, yeah, anyway, um, I'm happy to send you some, some reports about this if you're interested. So what I have to say is that basically people are quite optimistic about distributed manufacturing, um, and that a lot of people think, uh, also a lot of large corporations think, that it could be especially useful to provide a future collapse compliant means of production. And what is predicted that we will be seeing some future co collapses. Right. Um, so we did, what we did is we did um, a literature review, and this is kind of what I recap for you until now, and then we did a bunch of case studies. Um, what we were looking at is, um, I know that the 3D printing one, is, it looks a little bit awkward, it's a 3D printing upon a project, not just 3D printing. Um, but we interviewed a lot of amazing people who are experimenting with smaller or larger scale distributed manufacturing, and we tried to understand how they have been um, how they have been approaching growth and scaling, and especially what happened with them before uh, and leading up to the pandemic, and then during the pandemic as well. And this is how we created um, a bunch of case studies. And um, what we got out of this is a framework, uh, at least a preliminary framework. Uh, and I would like to give you a brief overview about this. I know that this is a lot that's very new, um, but I hope that you know some of it might be inspiring for you as well. So what we found is that efforts um, to scale distributed manufacturing actually have to focus on the ecosystem that a distributed manufacturer is in. So we looked at um, the ecosystem on uh, on three different levels. Micro would be the distributed manufacturer themselves, so that's one organization, uh, one particular node, so to say. And the meso level, um, which could be the collaboration between the distributed manufacturer and others, um, or it could be a, even a regional uh, regional scale. And then macro, of course, is the global level, um, which we also see a lot, I think, with networks of Bosch. People are trying to bring these different um, initiatives together, but then also, of course, um, entities like the United Nations um, or international development agencies can really react well on that level as well or support the building of the ecosystem. So we organized the framework around this, and then the other part is the five success factors that we have found. Um, these success factors are necessary when you are trying to scale distributed manufacturing, either from the inside or the outside. And these five are make or making products. Oh, thank you. Um, make or making products, uh, while also, for example, having access to different inputs and different skills. Sell or selling products in the market, um, for which one, of course, needs market knowledge uh, and, the mar and the readiness of the market as well. Um, operate or how the organization that does the making and the selling is operated, including the infrastructure, which some of it they actually have some um, some impact on other has other infrastructures have to come from the outside, um, and also they have to understand the regulatory environment. Um, collaborate, uh, which I think is something that you can all relate to, 
how do they actually work together with others in their own ecosystem and how that can be supported um, and invest or the need to invest to a grow or scale distributed manufacturing and this includes experimentations um, as well as the iterative development of business models because currently um, for distributed manufacturing aside from traditional business models we don't really have these novel uh, business models yet so people have to understand that iteration is needed um, and of course access to funding right you can't do it always on your own so now I would like to give you two brief examples because I know that the time is almost, uh, is almost over um, so basically along the lines of these five success factors we have created this whole uh, complicated um, matrix of, uh, of overviews of all of the things that are needed or might be needed to happen and some of them might be there in the ecosystem already some of them might be new um, for example for let's say for making um, looking at quality and compliance um, whether quality insurance um, is there already can be a challenge it can also be an enabler right so for example if you have ISO certification it can give cost your customers um, confidence in your products at the same time if you are not able to um, reliably generate uh, produce things um, in the quality and quantity that is needed uh, it's going to be hindering your growth uh, your uh, your especially your, your scaling scaling right this, these are some basic things that need to be said and need to be compiled somewhere and so this is why we have created this report and I'll tell you a bit more about that in a second um, and so what we what we also try to do is gather different strategies on how to make um, these how to overcome these challenges uh, and how to turn them into into enablers um, so for example as you see on the right we have the micro meso and the macro level um, open source ERP is something that can help on the global level on the on the macro scale um, with the uh, with the quality assurance and then on the on the micro level there's a couple of smaller things that can be done for example process of process documentation we've seen that it really helps people scale up uh, their uh, their efforts and we know that it's always a pain to do proper process documentation but it's really really helpful right um well, for example uh, under invest uh, we looked at different business models so of course as i said uncertainties um, about business models are still something that make it really, really difficult for people um, to, to grow or scale distributed manufacturing efforts. At the same time, getting the right business model uh, can be something that can unlock funding and start generating revenue and basically help you become sustainable, right? Again, these are these are kind of basic points, but they need to be they need to be said, need to be gathered somewhere. So what we're recommending here is an iterative approach that includes trials and errors. Uh, and of course, that's easier said than done because you know you have to make money to pay your bills, um, to have your machines running, and so on and so forth. So what we're recommending here on the macro level, the top-down level, is um, to share information globally on different tested business models and share them openly, um, and especially also the context in which they have either worked or failed <clears throat> so that people can learn from those. And so we also have created a checklist um, which is getting distributed manufacturing. Um, these are mainly for high level use, uh, but some of them might be enablers that maybe you, if you want to do distributed manufacturing, can have look at for as well. Um, so again, this is, this is about creating healthy um, ecosystems for distributed manufacturing. It should include building partnerships, including strong relationships with local communities, um, standardizing manufacturing processes, especially distributed manufacturing, right? Um, automating uh, manufacturing and administrative processes, automating things away that you don't need to think about in, the, in your daily lives is something that is going to help you scale, obviously. Um, building the capacity of all actors and stakeholders. This can be done locally in a makerspace. It can also be done together with the TBET institution, right? Um, and where was I? <laughs> right. Investing in skills development. Um, this is similar, but also knowledge transfer. So sharing knowledge with each other and, of course, infrastructure. 
Um, creating supportive policy and regulatory environment. Again, this is something that can also be lobbied for, advocated for bottom up. Um, prioritizing social and environmental sustainability in all of the aspects of the operations. This is especially important because if what we're going to see is a bunch of distributed manufacturers popping up in different places, who then don't actually pay attention to how you know the waste is managed and so on and so forth. We've seen some examples. Um, then that could lead to further environmental destruction um, as opposed to the promises of being more envi environmentally friendly. And of course, finally, the marketing the benefits of distributed manufacturing so that people start talking about it. I know that this was a lot of information. Um, the report is actually going to be downloadable very, very soon, today or tomorrow. So I hope that you are going to go and uh, download it, check it out. Um, we still have a lot of work to do with it. Um, but we are also planning on launching an ongoing knowledge sharing group and I would like to invite all of you uh, to come and join it. You can either talk to me in your email address, I promise to keep it safe, uh, or uh, yeah, or reach out um, to, the, to the team. And I would also like to, of course, thank the Frontier Technologies, Hub UK, the last CDO, and my team at Manufacturing Change. And thank you so much for your attention. Thank you very much. Is there any questions, anybody? I need to run over to get you the mic. So, so you mentioned sustainability as one of the outages, but like if I want in the world to contain one million more widgets, so I don't care how they arrive, it would seem to me just from first principles that a more efficient way of doing that is centralized manufacturing because you can employ efficiencies of, of scale. Yeah. So 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 what, how, how is this tension resolved? Yeah. Um, no, you're absolutely right. So centralized manufacturing has actually been designed to do exactly that, right? To do things efficiently and fast. Uh, and it makes perfect sense. The problem is when we are seeing things like, um, like the COVID pandemic, yeah? Suddenly things were not available because the supply chains broke down. And so what I wanted to highlight um, at the beginning of the presentation is that, especially, again, in humanitarian aid settings, for example, in, um, there are all these different scenarios that are not the norm. And, uh, and these future collapses, so to say, we need to find ways to comply with them. And so distributed manufacturing, the local production, which is, of course, it has different other advantages, like being closer to the end user, so being able to individualize, personalize particular things while also producing um, things on larger scales. Um, at the same time, uh, it is possible, and we've seen some examples, that uh, distributed ways of operating can actually be um, more useful in those, uh, those crisis scenarios. 